Hello everyone, I'm Red Herring and in this video I'm going to be introducing some new tools that I'll be using in my videos. I'm hoping that these can give you a better visual of what I'm trying to explain when I'm trying to explain them. The first item that I wanted to share with you were these uh, uterus and cervix. So I did make two of them and this one would represent more of a medium to high cervix. And this one would represent a medium to low cervix. So these can actually be placed into the other model that I'm going to bring out in a little bit. Um, and it'll help me be able to explain where to position your cup and how to open your cup and whatnot. Um, so I did make a cervix at the tip here. It does have a little bit of an opening so that you can see what it would kind of look like or resemble while it's um, outside of our bodies and I can also use this to explain how to find your cervix and whatnot. So you'll notice that they do have a hole in the back and it is so that it has an anchor when it goes into my model. So the second item, the model that I've been talking about, uh, my husband did carve it out. He had quite a bit of fun making this um, and he did a really good job but my painting skills kind of made it look like uh, a high school project. So please don't laugh. Um, you'll still get a good idea of what's going on and where everything is when I am talking about a menstrual cup. So here is my model, Kim. And this is the reason why my husband has named her Kim. If you get the reference, uh, the glass is different, but it's the same idea. My husband carved her all out and um, actually painted this side of it. She was longer, uh, quite a bit longer, and uh, she was too much for me to handle. So I cut her off at the waist, kind of like a magician. And on the other side is my awful painting, but it still gives you an idea, like I said, where everything is and what's going on. Here is the other side of Kim. Uh, I'll go ahead and go over everything here. So I did include a tailbone so that you know when I am talking about aiming your cup backward toward your tailbone, you can see it. This is the rectum and this is the bladder, these two brown parts, and I did actually make these a pull away so that when I'm talking about them you can see what I'm talking about, but when I don't want you to focus on those I can cover them back up. This is the area that my cervix and uterus will be sitting in. Here's the vaginal canal and uh, it goes right in like this. So I can use a menstrual cup in this area and be able to talk about it. Uh, I did include a fallopian tube and an ovary and I originally wasn't going to paint these in because it's not a part I would be talking about when I'm talking about a menstrual cup but uh, they are part of our reproductive system so I did include them. However, I didn't take a whole bunch of care into uh, trying to paint them or anything. Uh, it, I know it doesn't look like it but I really did try to make these nice. <laughs> So this purple area, it would be your pubic bone. This green area that goes from one side to the other side is your pelvic floor muscles. Those are the muscles that you'll be uh, working out when you are doing a Kegel exercise. Uh, when you hear people say bear down, that's what they're talking about is to use those muscles and to squeeze or push. Um, that's the muscles that you use to squeeze or push when you are uh, holding in your urine or trying to force it out and also when you're having a bowel movement. These are also the muscles that will help you keep your menstrual cup in place. The reason why I picked to make this model out of foam is because it will act a little bit more like our, our tissues in our body. They move, they flex. Uh, I do have a couple of plastic items. If you have seen any of my other videos, I did have a plastic egg that I was using to explain things with. I also have a tube 
um, and I don't think I've used it in any of these videos, uh, my personal videos. I did use it in another uh, a video for a company. So um, it just makes it a little bit harder to explain how to maneuver your cup when the plastic doesn't give and you're trying to insert your finger there and your finger kind of gets hung up on the plastic or just kind of doesn't slide in and out easily. Maybe I should have used lube, I don't know. Anyhow, using foam allows me to show you how certain things move inside of the body. And I know it's not exactly how it would work, but uh, it's a little bit closer than if I was using a plastic piece. So um, I'm going to fold this cup up into a regular uh, UC shape and insert this cup and you can see that this is how your body would move. The tissues would move to the side and you would insert your cup and you can release it and I can still insert my finger and push it into place around the cervix model here. And right here you can see that the urethra is getting kind of um, pushed to the side and when people say that they feel like they have to urinate more or uh, they feel like when they do go to the bathroom they can't empty their bladder that might be that what's happening your cup is putting enough pressure on your urethra to block off this entrance or exit um, so uh, I did want to use foam so that it could show those kinds of things. I hope that Kim and I are going to be able to help you understand and visualize a little bit better how to use a menstrual cup and how everything works when you're using a menstrual cup. So until I see you next time, take care.